Hi, and welcome to Knitting Blooms, episode 21. Today is Saturday, September 17th, and again, welcome to the show. Um, it's been a busy week for me this week. Um, I guess I haven't got that much knitting done this week, and the one day that I had time to knit at work, I only brought my Podcaster Challenge project, and I kind of finished what I could finish at work, and then I had nothing to do for two hours. And I think Crystal's moving the camera. <laughs> anyway, so I don't have a lot to show you, so today's show is probably going to be pretty quick. <laughs> probably one of my shorter shows, but that's okay, because we always need a shorter show every once in a while. Um, this week, also, in addition to not knitting, I uh, joined a running club for the first time. I've been doing some running for my exercise in the past few months and I've been reading a few books about running and so I decided to join a running club so I did that this week and that was quite fun for the first for the first run so I look forward to doing that again in the future they have a they meet once a week and also here's all all the cats that's all of a sudden they all came downstairs to to figure out what I'm doing Sammy, stop that. So, also, I decided yesterday that I'm going to be doing my first 5K run on October 1st. Can you sit over here with me instead of bothering that stuff? Come sit with me. Thank you. So, I found out that you get goodies when you, when you do a run. So, I mean, I know there's a registration fee, so it's not really free stuff but but that's kind of fun you get it at this particular run which is the um, Oakwood Red October run you get a t-shirt and a backpack and there's some other prizes and stuff that I guess they do as a random drawing so that'll be interesting when I started running I had no intention of doing any races here's Cody back here trying I mean literally all five cats are down here it's crazy <laughs> anyway so yeah when I first started running I didn't think I was gonna do any of the runs but if you get if you get goodies maybe <laughs> maybe I'll look look into doing some runs so that's been my week it's been it's been a little crazy it's been busy it's been you know not much progress I only worked on my podcaster challenge project and I started a bear but we'll get to that in a little bit um, speaking of the podcaster challenge, I do want to mention that the voting will start. There is lots of different prizes to be given away, and the voting will start on September 28th and will run through October 2nd. So if you want to be a part of, you know, putting in your, you know, voting for your favorite podcasters for certain um, categories, go over to the... Uh, the podcaster challenge board and I'll have a link for that in the show notes and um, check that out so that you can be involved in in voting for all the different prizes and there is a number of prizes for different categories like the smack talking award the suffered through it award the most altered pattern award and then there's a grand prize I think there's a couple other things that can be won so Go vote for your favorite podcaster, me or another podcaster, whoever. Um, again, and that starts September twenty eighth. I think the, I think all the projects have to be posted as complete by the, I think it's the twenty fifth. I think they have to be, I want to say they have to be done by the twenty second, but then they have to have podcasted by the twenty fifth. So that's why the 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 voting starts on the twenty eighth. And it will run through October 2nd. So, without further ado, let me show you what I've done on my project. I finished all of the, um, the knitting. And I sewed it together. So here's my bag. I mentioned last week that I wasn't sure what I was going to do with the strap. And when I, after I recorded and I went shopping for um, my material for my lining, which I'll show you in a minute, 
I found some ribbon that I decided to put on the inside of the strap. So I'm not sure it's the same color as the strap. So I, I was surprised that I was able to find something so close. But I did just sew the strap as written in the project. Um, and it wasn't a C-stitch, it was kind of like a woven stitch, so it's, I think it's a little sturdier anyway. I thought, I thought it was a C-stitch because that's what it looked like in the picture, but if you read the pattern, it is type of a woven stitch. So, it did make it a little bit sturdier, but then I added the ribbon, which, I mean, there is no give. This is not stretching because the, the ribbon is holding it tight, so I don't have to worry about that. And I did sew it up the side to make like a, I thought about sewing, doing a, um, a type of eye cord. I saw that Tammy, Sammy, that is my water. I saw that Tammy from the proverbial knitter, she, when she was doing her bag or her, um, she did a, it was a, supposed to be a laptop cover, but she did it smaller with smaller yarn to make it a tablet cover, but she did an eye cord bind off along the edge, and it looks really nice, and I thought about doing that, but I would have had a lot of eye cord to do. I would have had to go on here, and here, and up this side, and then down this other side. There would have been a lot of eye cord, so I decided against the eye cord, and I just did a basic it's kind of like it wasn't a mattress stitch because it was kind of like an inside out mattress stitch but it just kind of gave a just a little bit of an edge and the the ribbon on the inside I did line the entire thing so the ribbon goes all the way down and around so it's it's pretty sturdy on the bottom too I haven't lined it yet but this is my lining that I got for it it's just a it's just a polka dot green I wanted something that went with it, that kind of matched, and I looked at a couple different things, and I looked at some things that had a little bit of the the coral kind of color and the green, but I thought it was a little bit too busy, so I leaned against that, I, or went against that, I, so I ended up just getting the, the basic, and I am going to make a lining at some point, however... I'm trying to decide if I like the bag like this. Um, I didn't think I would like the bag like this. I think the bag seems a little too floppy and when you put something in it, I think it'll just kind of hang funny. So I wasn't sure if I was going to do a plastic canvas lining. I did create a plastic canvas lining and I'm thinking that it might be a little bit too wide I did it so that it would stretch out the the knitting and I think it might be a little bit too wide and when I hold when I hold the bag it seems kind of awkward so I have the plastic canvas lining that that lines the bag and once I do the fabric liner I if I decide to use the fab, the um, plastic canvas, I will attach it so that it's up, it goes up and around, and then the pla the lining, the fabric liner will go inside, so you won't ever see the plastic lining. But when I hold the bag with this plastic canvas in it, it's very stiff. I mean, it is very stiff. Plastic canvas is is stiff, so it doesn't hang real naturally on my body and I guess I should probably t I'll take a picture of me holding the bag both ways so that you can see the difference because I'd really like your opinion on whether I should put the the canvas in it or leave it as is I'm not sure how often I will use this bag I was thinking that it would be um, a nice little bag for a, a smaller sock project or whatever but if I use the if I put the plastic lining in it, you can see, maybe you can see, that it's not, it's only about, it's, th it's this wide. You can see here, this is the, this is the lining, and it's what, about an inch and a half wide, thick at the bottom. So, to put, Crystal, 
to put um, like a ball of yarn or something in here, it's not that wide for that sort of thing. But it would make a nice little purse if I was carrying just a wallet and my phone and a couple other things in there. But I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I want your opinion to tell me should I put the fab should I put the canvas lining in it so that it's all squared off? And again, I have to, I'll have to get a button because it'll this will come down and the canvas will be completely covered. You won't see the canvas at all. You'll just see the the out you know the outline of it. Or should I do it without the canvas and have it more of a natural? Even though the bag will be kind of floppy and whatnot, I'm kind of leaning towards this only because then I could really use it as a little sock project bag or something. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I'll use it one way or the other. So. You guys tell me if I should put the lining, the plastic canvas lining in it or leave the plastic canvas out. And then whatever you guys decide is what I'll do and that's what, what I'll do. But I didn't want to start the lining until I decided because obviously the lining has to be a different size if I'm going to use this than if I'm going to just use it in the bag. So that's my progress on my podcaster challenge project. There's the back side of it for you. And if I do use the lining, the plastic canvas lining, the flap will line up pretty much kind of like that. So it kind of almost goes perfectly in line. So again, I'm, I'm happy with how the bag turned out. I'm just not sure about the plastic canvas lining. And maybe, maybe I need to do the plastic canvas lining, but just cut off, you know, maybe about an inch to make it a little smaller. So it's more this size wide. Because I think, I think I made this plastic canvas about ten and a half inches wide. But I think when I just lay the bag, if I let the bag just kind of relax itself like this, I think it's more about nine and a half, nine to nine and a half inches wide. So maybe you'll suggest that I use the plastic canvas lining, but I cut it down to make it a little, little bit more, um, have the bag a little bit more relaxed than just stretched out to its, an inch of its life. Well, not really an inch of its life, but... So that is my progress on the podcaster challenge project. And now I've got Sammy over here and Crystal over here. <laughs> and I'm running out of space. And Sammy's got her head on my notes. <laughs> oh, you want some water? No, this is my water. Crazy. That's mine. She's, no, she's, I don't know, she's, ever since she had diabetes, when she had diabetes, she was drink a lot of water. That is mine. And um, so now every time we're drinking water or whatever, she's not diabetic anymore. We were able to solve that problem with food, which was a godsend because let me tell you trying to give her I mean giving her the shots wasn't a big deal but it was the stress of me having to worry about whether she was gonna get too much insulin and then go into shock I was just crazy I did the whole home testing of blood sugar and everything and I still test her every once in a while just to see you know how she's doing but she always wants to drink our water anyway moving right along I did start a new bear, and last week it, I um, announced that if you wanted to make some donations for Bear Fair, I would knit the bears, and then you would help me sponsor those bears and pay the Bear Fair. And I did get two donations, one from Laura Lolly T. She donated $18 to have six bears shipped. Um, and Suzette Catnaps, she donated $15 to have five bears shipped. So I better get knitting on those bears because that's 11 bears. I did my two and I'm, I'm going to pay for those. But um, 
from from here on out while I'm getting donations for bear fare every bear that I make will go towards those so I'm, I started a new bear so that's 11 bears right there that I have to knit and if I can knit my goal I think will be to try and knit a bear a week maybe I mean I knit a bear in a day the 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 boy bear I did in one day so I technically could do a bear a week I probably could have had a bear finished this week if I had taken my yarn with me to work that day that I had two hours with nothing to do I mean I ended up watching podcasts and stuff but I could have been knitting while I was watching those podcasts so let me show you the bear that I started I just started it last night we sat down to watch True Blood uh, we just Steve and I just um, Steve is my husband by the way oh, we just started to watch the fourth season we uh, just recently started watching True Blood and I downloaded all the episodes from the internet and we are on to the fourth season and I we started to watch actually I think we started to watch the fourth season a couple days ago I think we're on like episode five I told I told my husband I said why are we gonna try and rush through it because they're done with season four I don't even know I think it's gonna be next year before they start season five but he wants to hurry up and watch it so anyway I started my my next bear and it's gonna be a boy bear and I I'm using the dark brown for the for the legs the dark brown and I'm using a light blue for the pant color and then I'm going to do a shirt in red I think I think I'm just gonna do a solid red but I haven't decided I might I might do a striped shirt with red and the blue I haven't really decided yet we'll see how that goes and then instead of doing black for the eyes I'm going and mouth I'm gonna use white so I'm gonna see how that how that looks so that's my next bear um, again we watched two episodes of true blood last night and I got this much done and I probably could have done more but Sammy who is sitting on my lap now kept wanting to sit on my lap and usually when she's on my lap I can't do a whole lot of knitting because she wants to play with the yarn and sit on it and touch it and so I had to keep putting the knitting down so I couldn't get that much done but my guess is that this bear will be done before the end of the weekend I don't know how much knitting I'm gonna have time to do today our day is planned we're after I finish recording today we're gonna head out to Howl to go to the spinning loft there I think today they're doing some kind of um, spin in public and they're having some sales and I still have my gift card from when I bought my spinning wheel so I wanted to sp spend that I've been wanting to get back out there but just it's a long drive out there and the weekends have just been so busy and to go any other time than Saturday is just not there's no time so we're doing that and then we're going out to dinner with um, with Steve's parents so it's gonna be a busy afternoon hopefully by definitely I'll have time tomorrow because I don't think we have any time anything planned for tomorrow so maybe I'll be watching podcasts and knitting on my bear so that's that um, not too much progress but again it, it's a quick a quick thing and the boy bears without the skirt they go quick and when I do the girl bear um, to match this one I think I'm gonna try the doing the skirt flat or not flat but in the round but off the bear and then attach it so we'll see how that goes and really there's been no other progress on other projects this week I like I said I worked on my podcaster challenge project and got that finished to the point where it is and then I forgot I didn't take my knitting to work with me that I think that was on Wednesday Wednesday when I had all that time and didn't I what I actually I think it was Thursday because I finished up the um, the knitting on the the bag Wednesday night when we were watching podcaster or um when we were watching True Blood and then I finished it up at work and 
I don't know what I was thinking because I really, all I had to do was finish up the plastic canvas. But anyway, that's long, that's done and can't go back and fix it. So I didn't get much knitting this week, needless to say. So no other projects got worked on. You can, if you want to see current project, current progress on them, you can go to the show notes. I'll have all, I'll still have all the links in the show and you can check that out. Spinning this week, I did actually sit down to Viola. Um, I think Sunday night I did a little bit of spinning. My plan was to sit down to her every night this week and just do a little strip of fiber. And I did sit down to her Sunday night and did some spinning Sunday night, but then I didn't sit down to her again until Wednesday. And I should have done a little spinning last night when we sat down to True Blood, but I really wanted to get that bear started, so I didn't do any spinning last night. But I do with I want to try and spin at least I guess at least every other day um, to get some some spinning done. But I don't know. It's not like it's a huge rush, so I guess I feel like more relaxed and I can do it when I want to. Now that the weather's getting a little colder, I think it'll be feel like more cozy to, to be doing spinning. So hopefully I'll get more spinning done. And today I might work on my, and that was, I, Viola is, is spinning the Four Rivers Yarn and Fiber, the Merino. And then on my KY spindle, I'm still working on Yarn Hollow BFL and Tussa Silk. And I probably will take that with me today because I purchased that fiber at um, the Spinning Loft. And so I might take that with me to kind of work on a little bit today while I'm there. Um, probably just going to do a little shopping and probably won't hang out for too long. But I know that um, Steve's going to be taking his camera with us. So he'll probably go off somewhere to take pictures and I'll probably hang out at the store for a little bit. Um, Jennifer, I did not felt the slippers. <laughs> Last week, Jennifer was really on me about getting those slippers felted, and I had every intention of felting them Saturday night or Sunday, and I don't know what happened. It just, before I knew it, Sunday was over, and I just don't think about doing stuff like that during the week, because when I get home from work, I work out. And then I get showered, and then by the time I'm showered and ch and ready for bed, um, it's you know it's close to eight o'clock. And then I want to get a just a quick bite to eat. And then usually I'm either knitting or reading in the evening. And I just don't think about coming down here to felt. So maybe tomorrow, when I'm sitting around watching podcasts and knitting, I will do it down here in the basement so that I can felt the slippers. So I will have them to show you. I know she's. I know you're going to be on me, Jennifer. I know you're going to be on me until I get those slippers felted. So I better just hurry up and get it done. Um, what else? This week for Knitopia, we did receive an awesome donation from Lantern Moon. Um... And again, I'm not sharing the donations because I want them to be a surprise for those people that are attending the event um, and watch the show because it's always fun for surprises. So I don't want to show the, the prizes. But I do want to mention that, that Lantern Moon did um, send an awesome donation. We do still have spots available for the retreat. So if you're interested, please contact me on Google Plus or Plurk or Ravelry or wherever you can check out the the Knittopia website and um, yeah so we still have spots available and if you watched the proverbial knitter last week you would have seen the goodie bag that she received from the podcast or meet and greet the goodie bag was from last year's Knittopia but I I had one saved and that's what she won from the podcast or meet and greet when we did that at Stitches Midwest. So if you want to see what was in that goodie bag, go watch her show from last week. And she goes through everything that was in that bag. So it's, it kind of gives you an idea of, you know, what, what I try and 
give at the retreat. Let's see. Oh, I won a prize on Dramatic Knits Stash Down. I was so excited. I when I was watching his show and he announced my name, I'm like, oh, I won? <laughs> it was kind of cool. So let me show you what I won. I won my very first box bag. Um, I have not um, had one of these bags or seen them in public or anything. So this is my first experience with a box, box bag. And in addition to the box bag, which I think will be a great little uh, sock project bag, I also received two skeins of Lorna's laces. So this is awesome. And Lorna's laces, this is a shepherd sock, and it's 80% superwash wool, 20% nylon. And shepherd's, shepherd sock, Lorna's laces shepherd sock, is one of my favorite sock yarns. So I can definitely see me making some really cool socks with this in the very near future. This um, colorway is called Andersonville. Andersonville. Had not heard of that before, but it's greens and browns and blues, and I think it's going to be awesome. So look for some socks with that in the near future. And the bag. I guess I didn't realize that these box bags, and maybe it's just this particular bag, I'm not sure. They have some kind of like interfacing in them, so they're they're kind of stiff, you know, so they kind of hold their shape. I guess I didn't realize that. So that's fun. I am still concerned about the zipper um, because it seems like the one bag that I have that has a zipper, I always catch, and I use I use that bag for fiber, so I always seem to catch the fiber in it. So we'll see. I will use this bag for socks, and we'll see how how I do with the zipper, because I can foresee myself having some some other box bags because it is a, a nice shape and. It gives you that nice big opening. I mean, the opening is, is really a nice size, and you can easily fit two balls of sock yarn, and I don't have... I didn't bring any of my other projects over because there was no progress on them, so I didn't even think to bring them. But, but yeah, you could fit two nice size balls in there for a pair of socks and then your needles and your project. So it's the perfect size. And I don't know... I'm sure that Steve has on his... Um, his podcast who made the bag I'm not sure who donated the bag and who made the bag but it is very nicely very nicely made so I won that from the stash dash or the, the stash down um, from Dramatic Knits that was, that was quite surprising and fun to win let's see what else I have on my list Sammy um talked about that. Okay, so I guess we're on to my purchases from Stitches Midwest. And I have three more to show you this week. And then we'll be just about done. I think next week will probably be the last week. The first thing, which I've been thinking about, excuse me, that's my water, little miss. <laughs> I've been thinking about purchasing this yarn for a very, 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 very long time. And I haven't purchased it because it is so expensive. It's the Handmaiden Sea Silk. And it's 70% silk, 30% sea silk. And a couple things. One, some of the, a couple of reasons why I haven't purchased is number one, it's expensive. Number two, it wasn't until recently that I started making shawls. And although it's gorgeous yarn and I've heard a lot of things about it, I wasn't making shawls before, so I didn't know what I was going to do with one skein of this yarn. And what 
you know, I wasn't going to buy more than one skein. So, I did buy this, and I will probably make some sort of shawl with it. It is 400 meters, which is, what, 440 yards, approximately. So, it will make a nice, a nice shawl. This is the Hummingbird colorway. It's teals and green, a little bit of green and lavenders and like a, a rosy, rose color. So it's going to be gorgeous. I mean, and the, it's so soft and it's got a nice twist to it. I really am looking forward to the, to making something with this. It's definitely probably going to be a shawl. I just don't know what shawl, but it's going to be gorgeous. So that was one of my purchases. And then the next thing was I purchased this is Cascade Ultra Pima and um, I bought this I have three skeins of it and I bought it to do uh, Lala's Simple Shawl and my my friend Michelle who went with me to Stitches she also bought the same yarn and we got the pattern I think it's a free pattern but they were giving it away at the at Stitches and um, I just that one's coming apart so we're going to make the Lala's Simple Shawl with this. And I think, I can't remember what color Michelle got, but Michelle is allergic to wool, so we had quite a time trying to find different things for her to get that weren't wool. And um, this was one of those things that we can do together, and she can learn how to make a shawl because she's, kind of, she's kind of a new knitter. She's been knitting for a couple of years, because we taught her how to knit at the first um, Knitopia, which was knit away then, but that's beside the point. And she's been knitting, but she's still very intimidated. She's hasn't she hasn't progressed further than um, like scarves and dishcloths and stuff like that. We're trying to get her to come out of her shell a little bit more to make a shawl or um, a sweater. And really, they're not that much that much different than knitting a dishcloth that you have yarn overs, you know, or whatever. So I think she's knit like a simple dishcloth where she's got yarn overs. It's like the the on the bias one. So she knows how to increase and decrease. So I keep telling her, Michelle, you can do it. So that's for Lala's simple shawl. And then this next one. Again, I've been thinking about purchasing some yarn from this company in this colorway for a very long time. Not this specific yarn, but um, this is um, Manos del Uruguay. And this is their Kettle Dyed 60% Baby, baby Alpaca, 40% Pima Cotton. Uh, don't let your brother get that string because he'll eat it. Crystal's playing with a loose string over here. And I, again, I bought three skeins of this for some sort of shawl. I wasn't quite sure which shawl, but it's going to be a shawl. And again, I was looking, I've been looking at this yarn in this color, not this, uh, okay, not this yarn, but this colorway. And I believe it was their silk blend, but it's a single. And as much as I liked the colorway, and as much as I wanted to make a sweater with it, I wasn't sure I was going to like working with the single. I don't know what it is about singles, I just am not thrilled about working with singles. This is a plied yarn. It looks like a two-ply. Oh no, it's a three-ply. Um, and... I think it's going to make an absolutely gorgeous shawl. Again, I don't know what shawl it's going to be. I Let's see how many yards is in here. It's 170 yards per skein, and I have three of them. So I can make a good size shawl with this. So I think I will be happier with this over the same colorway in the single, the silk blend, 
that I was looking at. I think it was silk and merino. It was, I think it's a DK weight too. And maybe eventually I might end up getting it anyway. But for now, I have this and I think I'll be happier with it. But like I said, I may end up getting the other anyway at some point. This is the um, Friends and Fiberworks is where I is the the booth that I bought this and I was just seeing on the back here they have um, a retreat a summer retreat and a winter retreat so might might look into that I don't know where oh it's it's um, Asheville North Carolina. But that might give me a good reason to go to North Carolina and see my dad. But although Asheville's not all that close, but it'll be close, closer, I'll be closer there to him than I am here since he's in North Carolina. So I think that's it for this week. Like I said, it was a shorter show. Um, but again, shorter shows are good sometimes. I do hope to have those slippers felted for you next week, Jennifer. So look for those slippers. I know that not very many people that attend um, Knitting Club watch this, but I do want to mention, since I am going to do that run on October 1st, Knitting Club won't be until the 8th of October. So if you're planning on attending Knitting Club on October 1st, we won't be having Knitting Club on October 1st. And that is it. So thank you for watching the show, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you need to contact me, um, all my contact information is at the end of the podcast. And I hope you have a, a great week, and I hope you're knitting blooms this week. Talk to you later. Bye.